morning, everyone. And thank you for joining us for a conversation about nurturing your mental health during COVID-19. I am Ruth Nickens. I'm the Health and Wellness Program Coordinator at the Senior Center and I'm also an RN. This morning, we're here to address some common concerns that are impacting so many during this pandemic and to ultimately offer some answers, some solutions, some resources, and hopefully a few silver linings. We are all human. And we all have physical health and we all have mental health. And where we are on the health continuum can vary from moment to moment or day to day. And honestly, we are in some very unfamiliar territory right now. And most people, even those who identify as feeling fully healthy, are experiencing some level of what is known as coronavirus anxiety. For those living with, already living with chronic mental health issues, who struggle with chemical dependence, or who are marginalized for other reasons, negative, negative stress can increase anxiety and depression and the risk of relapse. We also know that loneliness and isolation were already huge societal issues. And now with social distancing and a shelter order in place, this sense of isolation has increased even more. So we made this video because we felt it was important and we wanted to let you know that you are not alone. We are all in this together and we are all sharing this sense of collective anxiety. We also hope to have a dialogue that will include um, a you know, conversation about your current needs and challenges. And we hope to help you feel safe and emotionally sound during this unprecedented time. Just be aware that we're gonna share a lot of tips and this will be good information, but it is not a substitute for individualized medical advice when that's necessary. So first I'd like to introduce you to our two guest speakers. We have Melanie Lockman, she's an LCSW and she is the Upside Program Coordinator. Say hello, Melanie. Hey, good morning, thank you for having me. Our pleasure. And I'd like to also introduce Nicolette Castagna. She's a master's in public health and a registered mental health counseling intern with Upside. Say hello, Nic Nicolette. Hi, good morning. Happy to be here. Happy to have you both. So you guys work for Upslide. Um, Upslide is a program that addresses isolation and loneliness, but um, Melanie, can you tell us a little bit more about that program? Sure, um, Upslide's funded by the Florida Blue Foundation. We were very lucky to get a grant from them. Um, funding also comes from the Tallahassee Senior Center Foundation. And like you said, it addresses lo loneliness, isolation, and depression. We try to get people connected to each other and to programs and activities, either at the senior center or in the wider community. And right now, we obviously can't offer the full array of services, but we are providing individual counseling, either over the phone or with video conferencing, and our Friends Connection chat groups are being offered via video conferencing as well. And so Upslide is, has, was relevant before, obviously, but now it really is because we are all being forced into isolation and loneliness has become a reality for many more people, not just this smaller segment of society. And we're all realizing how vitally important it is that we stay socially connected and have support systems in place. Yes. Mm -hmm. Nicolette, did you want to add something? I was just um, agreeing with what Melanie <laughs> said, yeah. Very good. So you guys have been uh, making phone calls as well as the, the rest of the staff at the Senior Center. We've been reaching out to participants. Um, what are we finding to be the challenges of our participants in terms of their mental health? So what I've been hearing when I'm talking to people, um, particularly from upside participants in this regard, is that they're frustrated to have to return to the isolated state that they were in, you know, they've just started to get involved and get connected and now they're having to shelter in place. Also hearing that people are more anxious in general than usual and that people have a sense of a loss of structure, um, which gives people sometimes a sense of lost purpose, um, which can be very frustrating. People are also saying that they're feeling guilty for being unproductive um, and for not being able to maintain life at its usual pace, or they're not using this time to, you know, clean out our deposits or make all their pantries super neat. Almost everyone is saying that they are eating more. Other people are finding that their sleep patterns are, are being thrown off. I've spoken also to a number of caregivers 
who have said that they're just more stressed out now because they're having to do the caregiving for the person that they love on their own now. People are spending more time with their families in close quarters, and this has led to conflict for some people that I've spoken to, and you know that's concerning because that can potentially become a dangerous situation for folks. Mm -hmm. Definitely. Along with eating more, um, hearing that people are drinking more, you know, it's pretty typical. We drink when we're stressed, we drink when we're bored, and just about everybody is both of those mm -hmm. things right now. Another thing I'm hearing a lot of, uh, most everybody says, that they are feeling a sense of grief for the loss of safety, mm -hmm. life's normalcy, and the loss of everyday human touch, just being able to give hugs and get hugs and... Um, interact in the physical ways that we do with people. Yes, that loss of human touch is huge because research has shown that humans need 14 hugs a day just for maintenance. And I'm, I doubt most people are getting anything close to that. Yeah. Can you make any suggestions for ways that people can get the same um, results of human hugs in other ways? I've been seeing some stuff online about folks who are going out into nature and hugging a tree. Um, also, it's those of us who have fur babies, hug on those and love on those a little more, I would say. Um, you have stuffed animals, just anything to kind of replicate that as much as you can, um, I think would be helpful. And just to recognize that we need that. Yeah. We need hugs. Thank you. Yeah. Well, while we're talking about um, grief and loss, what can you make a, um, a brief comment about how people can cope with loss at this time? Yeah, I mean, I think recognizing, first of all, that what we're feeling is grief. This is grief. Grief is a normal reaction to any loss. And you might be angry. You might have loss of focus or concentration. We all miss the things that we're used to doing, going out to coffee, eating, out with friends, just going to the senior center, all the things that we normally do. Take one day at a time, allow yourself to feel what you're feeling and know that everybody is going to experience this differently. Every single one of us is going through this, is grieving, but every single one of us is going to experience it differently. And there's no wrong way to do it. So don't worry that you're doing it wrong because you're not. Thank you. So Nicolette, we'd love to hear from you. What, what thoughts, experiences, strategies are you finding that people are using to support themselves? Yeah, so we are all in this together. This is a worldwide pandemic. It's affecting all different types of people across the, the planet, really. And that solidarity, that shared experience, it, it brings a strange you know, source of comfort for some folks. The, the act of sheltering in place, of staying at home, of not doing the things that we're so used to doing is, is an act of looking out for our fellow man, of trying to keep ourselves safe, of trying to keep others safe. So when we think about it that way, it, it, it makes a little bit more sense and makes things a little bit more tolerable. Um, it's, it's so important for us to have social connection with other people. We're calling the restrictions right now social distancing, but, but really physical distancing is a, a more appropriate way to refer to them because social interaction, human to human connection is just vitally important for our health and well-being and to just keep our spirits up, help us feel supported, help us reduce stress. So social connection has so many different benefits. So people are finding ways to be creative. They're, they're calling friends they haven't talked to in a long time. They're having more time to connect with people. So maybe those conversations are even, even deeper than they were before. Uh, people are using video technologies, um, social media, just different ways to stay connected and to share things, to feel, um, you know, feel connected to our friends and family. And talking to people that make us feel safe and supported. So kind of choosing who you're reaching out to and, and having the opportunity to, to connect with them. Um, I've heard from a lot of people how helpful music has been for them, whether it's putting something on to help them feel a little bit more calm or listening to something that reminds them of a really happy and joyful time in their life. We've heard people dancing in their living room by themselves. So no shame in that. Um, there's so many benefits to moving our bodies, listening to music, kind of getting into a space where we're feeling really alive. So, so music, uh, we've heard from a lot of participants that that's a, a really helpful tool. Um, talking about our emotions is very important. So recognizing what you're feeling, like what Melanie was saying, 
um, expressing those emotions, whether you're kind of talking about them to somebody else, even writing them down, but even just the simple act of recognizing how you're feeling and naming that emotion. So, well, today I'm feeling sad. Okay, what's that about? And kind of um, just allowing it to happen instead of pushing it down is a really, really helpful strategy. Um, you know, I've had a little bit of anger. My sister was supposed to get married next weekend. We've been planning that for a really long time. And and that's had to be postponed because of this. But just kind of allowing myself to feel the frustrations, it does kind of release some of their, their control over you. Um, there's a lot of different tools that people can use, and it's going to be different for everybody. So, Nicolette, what is a toolkit, and how is it used for coping with increased stress and anxiety in the context of all these issues we've touched on? Yeah, when, when we hear the word toolkit, um, referring to basically an inventory or just a list of things that help to reduce or manage stress. So each person's toolkit is going to be different from another person's. And some days some things are going to help and other days or other moments, you just might need to try a different approach. So it's, it can be helpful to think about a time in your life where you went through something that was really challenging or you overcame a crisis, what helped you do that? So we are suggesting, encouraging people to literally get a piece of paper and write down some of the different tools, the different activities and behaviors that help you feel a little bit better, that help you feel more in control. Um, so that those things are prepared and you're ready to use them when you're having a bad day. Uh, noticing what kind of triggers your stress so that you can be proactive and engage in some of those tools that help you is really important. Thank you, Nicolette. Um, so you talked a little bit about structure. Melanie, could you talk, tell us about why it's so important for people to create and maintain structure? Well, um... I want to kind of piggyback onto what Nicolette said about um, some steps that we might be able to take in order to adapt to this new landscape that we're experiencing right now. Um, and one of those would be to limit your exposure to news. It's really important to be informed, but it's equally important to take breaks. So maybe think about looking at the news only a couple of times a day, but do not have it on in the background all the time. Um, I would also say to find ways to reframe negative thoughts, you know, along with the coronavirus anxiety that you've talked about. We're probably gonna have some negative, scary thoughts, things like I'm in danger, or, I'm going to get sick. So think about ways you can rethink that, reframe it, to maybe say to yourself something like, I am doing everything I can to keep myself and others safe. That's a very different and much more helpful message to also try to do things that keep you in the present moment, keep your mind in the present moment. So think about things like reading or cooking, exercising, gardening. What are things that take your full concentration that you love to do? These are things that are grounding. And if your mind is in the present moment, it's not gonna be able to worry about the future because it's, it's rooted in the here and now. Um, we've said this already, we're probably gonna say this a few more times, that maintaining contact with your family and your friends and your support system, however you can, use the technology that we've got going on now, Zoom and other things like that, um, virtual support groups, if there were support groups you were part of, they might be doing them um, via video conferencing, so look into that, see if you can do that. Find a way to help other people, volunteering, that can help us to get out of ourselves, get out of our own problems, and feel like we're doing something because we actually are doing something to help somebody else. Find a way to get outside every day if you can, get out in nature, go out and find a tree to hug. Mm -hmm. Just move your body somehow. Um, and then um, as Ruth was just mentioning, probably one of the most important things we can do right now is to maintain structure and routine as much as we can and build some of the, the self-care, some of the things we were talking about, the things that renew and replenish us to build those into your structure as much as you can. Okay, very good. Um, are there some strategies that you might suggest to help others create positive habits and structure, Nicolette? 
Yeah, it's, it's really important when people are trying to incorporate new behaviors and new activities into their routine or just revisiting things that they know will help them a little bit more frequently to start small. Uh, baby steps so that we can build our confidence up and just become more hopeful and more sure of ourselves when we're trying to engage in these practices. So starting small is a really important thing. When we have goals for engaging in, in healthy things or things that are self-care related, it's important to be specific. So instead of just saying, oh, I'd like to start exercising more. Well, that's not, what does that even mean? It can be helpful to be really specific. So what are you gonna do? Think about when would be the best time to do it. What's the time of day where you're more likely to complete that? So being specific um, and then setting a goal that's realistic to you that you feel confident that, that you can achieve is really important. Um, kind of revisiting that behavior and reflect on what difference did it make to you? So thinking about, did it make me feel more calm? Did it make me feel a little bit more open or more in line with doing the activities that I really love in my life? So kind of reflecting on that can help reinforce if this is something that is positive for you or, or, or not. Um, giving yourself a pat on the back. So if you did something that you were setting out to do, literally tell yourself, good job for doing something healthy. Good job for doing something that made me feel more relaxed and took my mind off of anxiety. So, so really trying to establish that positive reward system so you are associating the behavior and the action with something that's positive. Well, I, I believe in visuals, so I have a few examples here of what some rewards might be, right? Oh, yeah. Yes. Some chocolate there. Crossing things off your list and stickers. Right. Wonderful. It can be, it, it can be really therapeutic and powerful to check something off of a list. It's like, mm -hmm. yes, I feel good that I was able to accomplish that. So sometimes, yeah, those little systems that we can put in place to help us really, you want to set yourself up for success. So what helps you be able to achieve things that you set out to do? What yeah. What motivates you? Mm -hmm. um, talking to other people can, can kind of help manifest our behaviors we can still have mutually mutual support with others so if we're telling our friends that we're trying to start this new thing we're trying to walk we're trying to do mindful movement with the senior center which i believe is on tuesdays mm -hmm. and you're kind of telling people what your goals are that can also be a great way to support one another great you've given us some great ideas but can you also share some very specific things that people can do to help decrease or manage their negative stress or anxiety Yes. Um, so I'm going to go through four different things that can help us reduce and manage our stress. All right. So number one is engage in relaxation techniques. Okay. So things that calm our nervous system and activate the relaxation response in our bodies. The first one is something that we all carry with us. It's accessible to everybody. It's totally free. And that is our breath. Okay, so tuning into our breath, tuning in, bringing our full attention to an inhale, a big inhale. Where do you feel the breath coming in? On an exhale, releasing that out, maybe letting go of something that's been frustrating you on an exhale. Mm -hmm. So when we bring our, our full attention to our breath, it, it sends a message to our minds that we are okay and we are safe. So it helps us be grounded in the present. Another uh, relaxation strategy is mindfulness, mindfulness meditation. And when I'm talking about meditation, I'm not referring to any specific religious or spiritual practice. I'm, I'm, I'm meaning meditation as really just paying attention in the present moment for a period of time, okay? It's all around training ourselves to be more aware. The goal is not to clear our, our minds of all of our thoughts because that's just not gonna happen. Um, the, the key is to just have the intention to do something that is healthy for you. It helps us be more aware of our thoughts. It helps us be more aware of sensations that we are experiencing. And even just a few minutes a day can, can really make a big difference. Great. So mindfulness meditation, uh, relaxation techniques. Um, Step number two that can really help us reduce and manage stress. Melanie already talked about this a little bit, but managing our thoughts and perceptions about things. 
our mind uh, is out to get us sometimes. So it can be really good to start to practice noticing your thoughts, kind of stepping outside of them and witnessing them, observing them. What's going on there? Where is that coming from? And then maybe if you're having these automatic negative thoughts, practice replacing them with something positive. Instead of, oh, I have to do this, maybe say, I get to do this. You know, I'm fortunate enough to have been blessed with another day and what can I do with this day? Um, so kind of reframing it to think a little bit more gratefully, a little bit more open about things. So gratitude can be a really awesome tool to replace negative thoughts with things that focus on, you know, what we have and what we're, what we're thankful for. So managing our thoughts and perceptions, number two, is a, is a great way to reduce and manage stress. Number three is practice self-care. Self-care being anything that helps nurture you, that helps make you feel more recharged and rejuvenated. It, it connects you with things that are helpful to your physical health, your mental health. And that's going to be different for everybody. It's sort of like what I was saying with the toolkit, different days, different moments, you might need different self-care practices. Um, humor is a wonderful way that we can engage in self-care. Laughter is is the best medicine for for so many folks some days you might need something that's a little bit more physically uh helpful so get outside and walk be in nature when we're in nature it's it really it's it's uh, very humbling and it just opens our minds takes us out of the the specific fo focus that we've been having on something that'd be more challenging and and it's just really helpful to reduce stress and make us feel a little bit more calm so tons of different ways that we can engage in self-care. We've been kind of mentioning those uh, across the last few minutes, but, but think about what recharges you, okay? And, and practice those different ways of self-care. Um, the last one is getting support from other people. So number four way that we can reduce and manage stress is getting support from other people. Whether that's talking to friends, family, coworkers that you miss, um, your peers that you used to see at the senior center every week, reaching out to them. So connecting with people, people that make you feel safe, people that make you feel supported. Um, if talking to your friends and family and finding ways to be socially connected isn't enough and you're thinking you need a little bit more support, consider reaching out to a mental health professional. Um, the, the engaging in counseling or psychotherapy or therapy, those are kind of used interchangeably, is, is different than talking to a friend. So mental health professionals have had years of training to help folks manage troubling emotions, manage difficult behaviors. Counseling can help people to find more acceptance, to learn how to practice healthy coping skills. So this is a professional relationship. The counselor is gonna, not gonna have any judgments about what you're saying to them okay it's an objective view of what you're sharing which is which is a little bit different when we from when we're talking to our friends or our family so both of those are really important um, friends and family and if you need it uh, mental health professional support um, but getting support from others and helping other people is is just really it really releases positive chemicals in our brain when we're doing something for other people and helping our our neighbor so engaging um, with other people and getting support. So just to run through those quickly one more time, number one is practice relaxation techniques. Number two, manage our thoughts and perceptions. Number three, practice self-care, practice self-care. And number four is getting support from others. That self-care part is really important. We often think of that in the context of caregivers, but in this scenario, we have to think about it for ourselves, whether or not we are caregivers. Um, really important. And I'd like to add one more thing to your list, if that's okay. Um, yes. That specific things to do to reduce stress. I think having creative outlets is, should belong on that list, um, whether you're an artist, whether you like to knit, whether you want to garden, whether you want to um, do some improvements on your home. Those are all creative endeavors, writing music, writing poetry, keeping a journal. So um, let's add that to the list as well as uh, for tools to reduce stress. Um, so you talked about mindfulness, but I'd love for you to elaborate that uh, on that a little bit more because that is a really that's an incredible practice that has benefited so many. Yeah, so mindfulness is really just paying attention in the present moment. 
Um, it can be done intentionally if it's a meditation practice and we're sitting really focusing on, on our breath or sitting for a period of time or lying down and paying attention to sensations in our bodies, maybe sounds around us. So we're just really engaged in the present moment. Mm -hmm. um, there's been tons of research over the last few decades on the benefits that mindfulness has. It can help us reduce stress. It can help us be less emotionally reactive mm -hmm. because we're training ourselves to, to take a pause and to consider how do I want to respond that would kind of best align with what I want. And when we're doing that each moment, it's setting the tone for the next moment and the next moment after that. So it's all about just being really present and to kind of simplify it, enjoy life. Um, the most mundane tasks such as washing your hands, which wash your hands, everybody. Um, focus on how it feels when you're rubbing your hands together. Um, what does the soap smell like? So really looking at things curiously instead of just going through the motions and being present with what we're doing every day can really have transformative benefits. Well, I know that's an area of interest for you. I hope at some point you'll make a video for us just on mindfulness techniques that we can share with our viewers. Yes, that would be my pleasure. I would love to do that. Thank you. I'm witnessing a lot of, uh, a lot of mindfulness happening sort of um, unknowingly on people's parts. You know, people posting on Facebook about a bird's nest that they've been watching or, you know, a lizard inside their porch or you know, the, the sunsets, just people seem to be paying a little bit more attention right now to nature and to what's around them because things have slowed down, but um, they're act actually practicing mindfulness without realizing that's what they're doing. So, um, yeah, it's, it's going back to the simple pleasures in life without us having these roles or past experiences. It's just being fully present and enjoying every moment of life. So it's a good point, Ruth, thank you. So a person is, let's say they're implementing a lot of the things we're talking about. Um, they're trying stress reduction techniques. They're trying to be present in the moment and so on, but it's just not enough. How does a person know when they need to reach out for additional help? I would say that before you reach out for help, it's vital to have a plan for where you're going to get that help before a crisis happens. So you can write down that information of who are you going to call in a crisis, what family, what friends, what mental health professionals, sponsors, whoever it is. Um, think about your, your support folks, your friends and your family, who are the people that are good for you to vent to, who are the people who are comfortable with tears, comfortable with silence, who are the folks you, who, when you need to laugh, who's that person? So just kind of keep that in mind so you know before a crisis happens or before you need somebody that you know who you're going to call. Asking for help can be really, really difficult because it makes us vulnerable. It puts us in a vulnerable place, but it really is actually a very brave and very positive thing to do. So during this time, it's normal for all of us to have moments of stress and sadness and just more heightened states of anxiety. But if you are in a constant state of anxiety or you feel like you're in a constant state of overwhelm, if these feelings are making it so that you don't enjoy the things that you usually enjoy, if they're throwing your sleeping and your eating patterns off, it's messing with your concentration, you can't tend to regular daily tasks like bathing or you don't wanna eat or just you know, take care of personal grooming, then it is time to reach out. If you are having thoughts of suicide or thoughts of harming or killing another person, this is absolutely the time to reach out to a mental health professional. Um, and do not hesitate to do that if you find that that is happening. It's vitally important. Also, if you are in danger of being hurt by another person, if you're in physical danger, that is another time to reach out so that you can get the help that you need to stay safe. Um, lastly, I would say a time to reach out for help is if you are concerned about an increased use of alcohol or other substances on your part, if you're finding that that's really interfering with your day, or if you're new to sobriety and you're finding it difficult to maintain your sobriety, that would be the time 
to reach out um, to your sponsor or to get a sponsor or to attend a virtual meeting or something along those lines. Um, we're gonna put up a slide with some contact information of some resources. So you might wanna take a photograph of this or jot um, some of these down or pause the video so that you can have these, like I said, have these ready when you need them. Um, so note that Upslide is there. We are here for you. If you need somebody to talk to, you need more social connection, you're feeling lonely or isolated, um, please um, note these. Um, and note too that a lot of these places are doing online groups. NAMI and AA and NA are doing a lot of virtual meetings. Remember also that other sources of help are your family, um, your, your doctor, your primary care provider, family members, friends, just reach out when you need it and, and do please take note of these resources. Thank you. So if someone does want to access uh, a mental health counselor or therapist, how would they go about doing that? Yeah, um, it's really important for people to be aware that in the last month or so due to COVID-19, our healthcare system has made a lot of rapid changes to become more flexible, to ensure that people have access to care, access to their healthcare, mental health care, with, you know, in a long distance way, without actually having to step foot in an office or a clinic if they don't, if it's not absolutely necessary for them to do so. So the standard of care has not changed, but the mechanism or the way that it's delivered has changed. So as Melanie was alluding to, a lot of different programs have moved to video-based or phone-based, and they're using um, telehealth as a method of delivering care. And when, when you're hearing telehealth, it's, it's really just the use of electronic information and telecommunications to support delivery of clinical care and patient education. So that's what we're meaning by, by telehealth, if you're hearing that. Um, if you have a history of, of accessing uh, mental health support, so you have a therapist or a counselor that you've worked with in the past, reach out to them. It's, it's pretty likely that they're, they're using a video-based or phone-based technologies to, to support their patients or clients, so reach out to them. If you're, you're new and you'd like to try to get in touch with somebody and establish that relationship, talk to your primary care provider. They might be able to refer you to a practice or a specific person. So that's a great place to start. There are some really awesome internet-based search tools. So we did share one on the previous slide uh, where you can search by zip code, by insurance provider, and then by area of specialty. So what area are you really needing some help with? And you can be matched up with, with folks that have a lot of expertise in that. Locally, there's a lot of practices that and, and organizations that are available and eager to help support people's mental health. So the Appalachia Center, Capital Regional Medical Center has counselors that are available to help. So, so reach out to them and, and access those organizations that are, that are here for you, here to help you be able to, to adapt and, and be safe during this time. In some ways, it's probably easier to access mental health services today um, than it was a few months ago, which is a really positive thing. Um, and with the use of telehealth, I saw where the Senior Center is um, at this moment posting a really great list of resources and information about telehealth. So we'll be hearing a lot more about that. Um, boy, we've touched on a lot of great points and issues today. Um, I'd like to ask you, is there anything else um, that we haven't touched on that you would like to mention? Yeah, I would say that it is important for all of us to realize that we are reacting normally to an abnormal situation. We're going to feel off kilter. We might wonder if we're doing the right things to cope. But remember that if what you're doing works and it's not harmful to yourself or anyone else, then that is okay. And as I said before, there is not a wrong way to get through this. Mm -hmm. It is absolutely essential that we be gentle and patient with ourselves and be gentle and patient with those around us. We, this is new to everybody and we are not always gonna be our best selves during this. It's stressful, it's not possible for all of us to be our best, at our best, it's just not. And when you ask for help, you know, we've given you this list of resources. Remember to advocate for yourself. So if you're talking to a professional, make sure they answer all your questions. Um, be clear to whoever you're talking about, be it a professional or a friend or 
a member of your family that to be clear on what it is you need as much as you can. Sometimes we don't know what we need, but be clear about what you're struggling with. That way people can figure out how to help you as best they can. Yeah, pe people, are, people are not mind readers, so we gotta try to be as specific and clear about what our needs are yeah. um, so that we can get those needs met. Um, I would add just self-compassion is really, really important right now. This is a very disruptive time. We're all kind of experiencing a little bit of a traumatic response to it. So whatever you need in that moment, don't judge yourself for what your reaction is and just be really kind with yourself. It's going to be normal to have a lot of ups and downs. So just expect that and, and get, get what you need and, and ask for help, even though it can be it can bring up some difficult emotions, feeling like we're dependent on other people. Um, but it's important to, to go off that glimmer of hope and, and know that there is help out there. Those are great words, Nicolette. Great words to close on. Um, I'm going to show now a, a list of questions that I think would be very beneficial for us to ask ourselves every day, but especially during COVID-19. The questions are on the screen right now. What am I grateful for today? Who am I checking in on or connecting with today? What expectations of normal am I letting go of today? How am I getting outside today? How am I moving my body today? What beauty am I either creating, cultivating, or inviting in today? I think if we can all think about and answer those questions each day, then we're taking some right steps in the right direction. Um, Nicolette, Melanie, thank you so much for being here today. You've shared so much and um, greatly appreciate it. And hopefully this will be helpful to our viewers. Yeah, thank you again so much for having us. This is really a wonderful thing to be part of. Hey everybody, stay thank well. Thank you. Stay well and stay safe.